singer. In the West End of London, there are theatres abound, with stories and musicals that are greatly renowned. So many people over time have stood upon these stages, giving fine performances remembered through the ages. Some will act and some will dance, and others will tell jokes, giving all they can to prove that they're not like other folks. But then of course, we can't forget all those who shine in song. Making melodies for cheering crowds is where they do belong. And for one woman in particular, this truth she could attest, and what talent, oh my gosh, she really was the best. So many theatres wanted her, she was quite spoiled for choice. They knew they'd get a sell-out crowd for those who knew her voice. After a performance, she would go on to her next show, and to give a little teaser, she would sing as she would go. People would then follow her, so as to hear her more, and soon there'd be a bustling line waiting at the playhouse door. Though I'm afraid I have to say that her fame it would not last, as one early morning it became clear that the poor dear she had passed. Just lying still upon the street, between the theatres she called home, was it murder or just her time that stopped her as she roamed? There was of course much speculation and mourning for this star, but time awaits for nobody, and her memory faded far. You'd think with such an exit, her performance was now done, but it seemed that she had different plans. Her new show had now begun. Morbid rumours slowly spread at theatres in West End of a voice that whispered rhythmically that none could comprehend. A ghostly story, nothing more, that's what so many think, until they hear it for themselves, then what happens brings them to the brink. An evening at the theatre is how it all will start, hard to say how she does choose, but you'll know as you depart. It is said that you will hear her, her song upon the air, but as soon as you look for the source, you'll see nobody there. Even as you leave your seat, then the theatre as well, you'll hear the singing still around, but from where you cannot tell. It will follow you until the point you leave W1 for good, and not come back, at least for a time, as any wise soul really should. But should you choose to stick around, and hear her song get nearer, then what cost curiosity, I'm afraid it shall be dearer. So be careful in old London town, you might be put through the ringer, do keep an ear out for her song, that spectral starlet singer. Land To traverse this great world in search as you roam, and then find the place that you can call home. That is what happened when I was out there, drifting and aimless, belonging nowhere. I remember that day, so clear in my mind, and how my conviction was strongly resigned. I'd been on the road, using naught but my feet, for God knows how long, you know I was beat. My cold weary bones, for rest they did cry, I figured my body was ready to die. But then I looked up, from the dirt I long saw, and there was a beauty I'd not seen before. In the deep wilderness, and surrounded by trees, I was gently awoken by the cool of the breeze. The air it was fresh, the land was so healthy, such abundance of life, the nature was wealthy. Clear and crisp water, which flowed from a stream, 
This place was so perfect, it was just like a dream. So I made my home here, where my troubles would cease, where I could live undisturbed, and finally have peace. Or so I had wished, though my hopes were in vain, as my home was intruded, much to my disdain. Damned tourists would come and ruin it all, disturbing these grounds, the self-righteous gall. The men and the women, the girls and the boys, they shatter the quiet with their obnoxious noise. They dirty the waters and tear at the trees, campfires leave scars on earth like disease. They scare wildlife, they littered crevasses, I simply could not forgive their trespasses. So I've taken some steps to catch them off guard, and imprint a message I hope hits them hard. Man traps and snares make full fond reminders to keep far away for those pesky pathfinders. These rock hills are vast, with many places to hide. Be a shame if some hikers set off a rock slide. Tents are so handy to help people expire, especially when you can set them on fire. I'll fight to the end with what I have at hand, and deal with outsiders who tread on my land. No. Some things are best kept secret, I'm sure we can agree. Words unsaid, sounds unheard, and sights you'd best not see. Now I understand the feeling of wanting to be shown, and told of things so dark and bad, to explore the great unknown. Who wouldn't be excited by such ancient mystic arts? those that whisper to our minds and excite our daring hearts. The promises of knowledge, of things but few can state, that what's been seen and understood, not all appreciate. To delve into the ether and meet what dwells beyond, I must admit that such exploits even I might not abscond. It's not as if I've been there much, I've maybe peeked beyond the door, just had a look and not so far, though I still desire more. From what little I can say of my time within these realms, its allure is indescribable and it often overwhelms. You lose yourself within such space, it all becomes a blur, and when you leave it's much the same trying to remember where you were. Perhaps I've said too much on this. It's too great of an allure. I'd hate to lead you down this road. You're tempted, I am sure. These things are just not worth it. Forget what's been said and shown. Better to be cautious here, and leave well enough alone. But some people just can't help themselves. Folk can't stand the apprehension, and the moment you look into these, you've caught all the wrong attention. It does not take much for them to intercede, to study you, your mind and soul, and get everything they need. They learn of you, your wants and needs, desires that you hide, anything that they can use to find their way inside. Your fears and your anxieties, and how to make you crack, breaking your defenses down, from which you can't come back. The ways to make you angry, what gets under your skin, the issues that you bury down, containing deep within. Your family as well, of course, how could they leave them out? Through you they have a bloody bond, and that you shouldn't doubt. And don't forget your dearest friends, who'll surely not be spared, once they've gathered what they need 
from what you've generously shared. Where you are and what you do, when you think that you're alone, you've looked for them and now they're you, and you reap what you have sown. They'll watch you through the day, and even as you sleep, every day they get closer, towards you they do creep. No matter what does happen now, or wherever you may go, you cannot run or hide away, as they will always know. Closed. There is a building designed for retail, which has quite the history I now will detail. It's changed many hands as the years have passed on, with numerous owners and businesses gone. It sits in a spot, the old side of the city, neglected and rotting, it's truly a pity. The paint it is peeling, like dry withered skin, large splits in the walls where the cold has got in. The glass of the windows has many a crack, and there's a terrible mould which has stained the rooms black. It wasn't always this way, as we look through the years, at all of the splendour through many careers. From butchers and bakers, a greengrocer's too, a mountain of produce in time has come through. A tailor was here, which sold suit and dress, and an art gallery with works to impress. A florist as well, with flowers abundant, from a subtle fragrance to those truly pungent. But why, with all this, and all of its history, has it been left to rot? It must be a mystery. Well, I say, it's not so, as the reason's quite clear. No one will move in, out of one motive, fear. Fear of what happened, and all of the pain. Fear that these disasters might happen again. The butcher turned mad, but acting discreet, served up the homeless to his neighbours as meat. The baker whose lust lured him into desire, at the scorn of his wife who tried to kill them with fire. The greengrocer who had invested all that he'd got, but the produce and business in tandem did rot. The tailor who sold on an ill-fitting suit to the head of a gang who came back to shoot. The art gallery was caught in a scandal, and each piece of art was destroyed by a vandal. The florist who ventured for exotic new plants, unaware of the poison, its pollen soon grants. The fate of each owner turned from bad to worse, it seemed that this building was host to a curse. So many left scarred from what had been exposed, all we can do now is pray it stays closed. Good day, I'm Jar19 and thank you for listening. So what did you think of Four Random Creepypastas Volume 6? I really enjoy working on these videos, so it was nice to be able to have this as my official 100th video on the channel. I want to thank you all for sticking with me this far, and hopefully onwards through the next 100 videos as well. Plenty more creeps and cryptids to tell of, so it doesn't look like the fun will be stopping anytime soon. That being said, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then perhaps subscribe, leave a like, and if you're feeling particularly cheeky, maybe even a comment. I do hope that you'll join me again. Stay safe, sleep well, but remember, here we make monsters.